Blessed Virgin Mary gave the rosary to St. Dominic and she told him that those who prayed the rosary would have special graces. In fact, the Blessed Virgin Mary made 15 promises for those who pray the 15 mysteries of the rosary. And when Our Lady came at Fatima, she asked for us to meditate on the 15 mysteries of the rosary. Now there are other rosaries. There's the Franciscan rosary and there's the uh, Servite rosary. The, the Franciscans and their seven mysteries of the rosary meditate on the seven joys of Our Lady. And the Servites meditate on the seven sorrows of Our Lady. But we're talking about the 15 mysteries of the rosary. This is the rosary that Our Lady gave to St. Dominic and the one she asked us all to pray at Fatima. And what are those 15 promises that she gave us? which are still good and very important, as you'll see. The first promise, whoever shall faithfully serve me by the recitation of the rosary shall receive signal graces. What is a signal grace? A signal grace is a special grace. It's an unusual grace. It's a grace that is not given to everybody. And so if you pray the rosary, our Lady will give you special graces not given to many people. And so pray the rosary every day. Our Lady told us to pray the rosary every day to obtain peace in the world. All of us should pray the rosary every day, and each of us who do that will receive signal graces. They won't be the same grace, but they will be quite unique to ourselves. The second promise the Blessed Virgin gives is, I promise my special protection and the greatest grace to all who shall recite the rosary. So the Blessed Virgin gives special protection. You might say, well, what, how important is that? Well, the Blessed Virgin Mary is the Queen of Heaven, and so anything that she asks of God the Father God will give her because she never refused anything when he asked her, even to the sacrifice of her son on the cross. And so if she says she'll give her special protection, you can be sure that God will give whatever kind of protection to you that she asked you to have. If it's a special protection, not just a general one, it's a very special grace indeed. The third promise, the Blessed Virgin speaking says, the rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice it will decrease sin and defeat heresies. Now, this may not seem that important, but when you consider that we're surrounded by apostasy, when we're surrounded by heresies, people taking them in, very intelligent people being fooled, being taken in by these falsehoods, Our Lady promises that if you pray the rosary, she will defeat the heresies in your life. So be sure, especially in this time of heresy and apostasy, to pray the rosary for that reason. She also tells us it will decrease vice. So it will overcome vice, rather, and it will decrease sin. So people have asked, they sometimes have tried to get rid of sins, and they can't. I've told them, for example, of a person who couldn't stop use blasphemy or using our Lord's name in vain, and he wanted to. He tried. I said, every time you catch yourself doing that, just say privately to yourself, One Hail Mary. In a few months, he had been trying to get rid of her for some time. In a few months, he got rid of this this habit and it never came back. Just think of what it will do for you trying to overcome uh, sins which are even more entrenched by praying not just one Hail Mary but 50 Hail Marys in the Rosary. It will overcome your vices if you're faithful to praying the Rosary. That reminds me of what St. Teresa of Avila said. She said, a person who meditates cannot live in mortal sin. Either they will give up their meditation or they give up the mortal sin. You see, if a person meditates on our Lord's passion and death, and how much he loved us, and how much he loves us, then their heart begins to be filled with the love of God, with the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And with that love in their heart, they can't then continue committing mortal sins. So meditate, to meditate on the, if you prayed, if you had the practice of meditating for 15 minutes a day, that you would overcome living in mortal sin no matter what it was. And of course the rosary is a prayer not only of vocal prayers, but also of meditation. So let us realize that Our Lady is telling us a very important thing. We can overcome all the sins in our own life. We can decrease sins of weakness and overcome completely the vices that have taken over us, even for years, if we continue to pray the rosary every day, especially when you meditate on the mysteries. The fourth promise the Blessed Virgin tells us is as follows. It will cause virtue and good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. He will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanities, and will lift them to the desire of eternal things. All that souls would sanctify themselves by this means. So in this fourth promise, we see Our Lady is not telling us that it's holding on, like the third promise, overcomes uh, vice and decreases sin. Here she's telling us it will help virtue flourish in your soul. 
and that it's a great means to do this. And so it will, if people are worldly, if people are taken in by either vanities or love of ambition or money or something else, things that pass in this world, that's why they're called worldly. Once you die, you can't have your money anymore. You can't have your, uh, the, the good opinion of your fellow man because you're gone. So whether it's vanity or whether it's money, whether it's power, whatever it is you get in this world, these things that all pass, these are worldly uh, goals. And these will be, you'll have your heart withdrawn. You'll, you'll live in this world, but without having to be chasing after uh, illusions, whether it's, as I say, vanity or money or power. All these things are really illusions. I mean, I know a very wealthy man, he's worth several hundred million dollars. And here he is afraid. What's he afraid of? He owns more than all of us that watch this program will ever see. But he's afraid. But if you pray the rosary every day, you won't be living in fear, even if you haven't got a penny to your name. Because you know you've got the protection of the Mother of God and you know that you're not wasting your time chasing worldly useless goals. So, it's a great promise. He says it will draw your heart from worldly goals and will help you put your heart on heavenly things. St. Augustine tells us that our hearts are restless until they rest in Thee, O God. And so when we put our hearts truly loving God and the things of God, then our hearts are at rest. And then we will find happiness as much as you can find in this world. The rosary will help you do that. Pray the rosary to sanctify yourselves. Pray the rosary every day. The fifth promise the Blessed Virgin makes is as follows. That soul which recommends itself to me by the recitation of the rosary shall not perish. Our Lord asks the question, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Here, the one thing necessary that you don't want to lose ever is to lose your soul. Our Lady says, recommend yourself to her protection, to her prayers, to her in help and intercession, and she will see to it that you don't go to hell by praying the rosary every day. The sixth promise. Whosoever shall recite the rosary devoutly, applying himself to the consideration of its sacred mysteries, shall never be conquered by misfortune. God will not chastise him in his justice. He shall not perish by an unprovided death. If he be just, he shall remain in the grace of God and become worthy of eternal life. The sixth promise, then, is that if we pray the rosary and meditate, or, to use the words of Scripture, ponder in our heart the mysteries of the rosary, and there are 15 mysteries, 15 incidents in the Lord, life of our Lord and Our Lady. And if we think about the lessons that the example our Lord and Our Lady give us, is, and just ponder it quietly, solely in our heart, if we do that when we pray the rosary, Our Lady promises that we will not be overcome, be overcome, be overcome by misfortune. You see people, some unfortunate people, that all of a sudden all their luck, so to speak, s seems to turn against them, that they have nothing, they're overcome. I've, I've heard some very tragic stories, known some very tragic stories. But if you pray the rosary while meditating on the mysteries, Our Lady promises that you will not be overcome by misfortune in your whole life from the day forward that you start praying the rosary and meditating on the mysteries. And, of course, it's not luck that brings about a person's misfortune. Everything's in the providence of God. God allows even the just to suffer, but they're not overcome. It's a bit different. Even if they suffer, even the martyrs, we celebrate the birth of the martyrs into heaven on their feast day. And of course, by the, in the eyes of the world, they were overcome. But they, in fact, went to um, heaven rejoicing. In fact, the feast of St. James, we're told, that St. James was so courageous when he was being led to his martyrdom that his, the man who was to execute him was so overwhelmed by his example that he was converted and went to martyrdom with St. James at the same time. So that's an example of how St. James was not overcome by misfortune, but in fact uh, took, as it says in Scripture, I think it's in, Saint, in Romans, in St. Paul to the Romans, uh, all things work together unto good for those who love God. So let us uh, pray the rosary and let us meditate on the mysteries so we gain this promise as well. The seventh promise. 
Whoever shall have a true devotion for the rosary shall not die without the sacraments of the church. The sacraments, of course, there are seven sacraments in the church, but the two sacraments or the three sacraments that every faithful person should want to receive, every faithful Catholic would be to receive, of course, extreme unction or the anointing of the sick, confession, and Holy Communion, or as it's called, the last Holy Communion receives, called Holy Viaticum, which means that it's the, you're taking our Lord with you on your passage, on your way to eternity. And it is a great grace to receive the sacraments of the church. Of course, to receive them in a state of grace, if you're not in a state of grace, go to confession first. And some people can't go to confession before they die because they die in their sleep or because they're in some accident and they die before a priest can get to them. Our Lady promises that if you are faithful to the rosary, a true devotion to the rosary, you shall not die without Our Lady providing that before you die, she will send a priest to you to have a priest hear your confession and give you Holy Communion. And if he has his oil, the holy oils with him to give you the sacrament of the sick, which is also a strengthening for that special passage from here to eternity. The eighth promise is as follows. Those who are faithful in reciting the rosary shall have during their life and at their death the light of God and the plenitude of his graces. At the moment of death they shall participate in the merits of the saints in paradise. They have the light of God. How many people do we see going through life who are confused? Sister Lucy, in fact, wrote it, talked about and wrote about the diabolical disorientation that many people are suffering today in the church, including, she said, people who have high positions of authority in the church. It was her kind way of speaking about bishops and cardinals, as well as priests, and other very important people in the eyes of the world. These people, not all of them, of course, but a number of them are suffering from diabolical disorientation. She applied the words of scripture to some of them by saying, they're blind and leaders of the blind. And of course, our Lord said, those who are blind and leaders of the blind, both of them fall into the pit. He's referring to the pit of destruction. Here, if you have the light of God, you don't have diabolical disorientation. And so here's a great promise for those who are faithful to recite the rosary. Now, this reminds me of a promise that uh, goes with the scapular, and I, I digress a moment, but it was in 1965 that I first put my scapular back on, and I've realized, I didn't realize that at the time, but I realized it subsequently, that by wearing the scapular of Our Lady Mount Carmel all the time, every day, all, day and night, that you get a special grace of being able to pray the rosary every day. It's not just, just been my experience, although it has been mine too. I've missed very few days by the grace of God and Our Lady of Mount Carmel and her scapular I missed very few days in the last 40 years plus in praying the rosary. And so if you persist, if you're faithful in reciting the rosary during your lifetime, then we will have the plenitude of, of his graces at, and light of God at death and during their life as well, having this light. And so the rosary is especially useful in our times, especially since there's so many people who are confused, who are diabolically disoriented, meaning, I don't know if you know what, if a person is disoriented, it's occasionally there's a physical disorientation, and I've had that happen sometimes when I've woken up in a strange room on my many travels, and I'm wondering, I'm half dreaming I'm somewhere else, and I'm wondering where the light is and so forth. I'm slightly disoriented. Of course, she wasn't talking about that, but if people are physically, spiritually disoriented, they lose their bearings. They don't know which way the, the purpose of their life is, where their goal is, and how to get there. And that spiritual disorientation is unfortunately all too common. Well, you won't suffer from that if you're faithful and persisting in praying the rosary every day. In the ninth province, Our Lady says, I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. Purgatory is the place where souls after their death go to be cleansed. They are purgated or purged of their sins and the punishment due to their sins. Now, if a person commits a mortal sin, their sin is taken away by the sacrament of confession, but not all the punishment. So some people have the idea, well, look how lucky that person is. He, he does all these things and he still has all these good things in this life. Well, then, and yet he's doing all these sins. If he makes it to, to heaven, he's got a long time to make up for it in purgatory for all his 
faults. And so Our Lady says that she will come, if you've been praying the rosary, been devoted to her rosary, that she will come and deliver you from purgatory. I understand that to mean she will not take you the minute you get there, but she will take you from there in a time shorter than you should be there, because in reward for your praying the rosary, she will uh, make up for some of your punishments by her merits and draw you out of purgatory sooner. The tenth promise, the faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. You know, there are people that think, well, all I have to do is to get to heaven is to sort of just avoid moral sin so I can do everything else but avoid moral sin. The problem is by aiming that way is sometimes you might just miss by aiming too low and you don't get to heaven at all. So it's better for us to aim high and if we don't quite get as high as we would like to be, at least we've tried, we've striven to be as high as we can and we have a better possibility of getting to heaven in the first place. What Lady promises that that of course, and this I suppose maybe people don't realize it, but there are degrees of glory, or there are degrees of happiness in heaven. It's just as there's degrees of of punishment in hell. Hell is eternal; it's in fire and so forth. But some people are suffering more in hell than others. Although everyone suffers much more than we can possibly imagine, all the atrocious sufferings anyone or everyone together can suffer does not match the suffering of one soul in hell. Similarly the happiness of heaven is so great that, as it says in Scripture, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. What great glory, what great happiness God has for a person in heaven. But even so, in heaven there are still degrees of this happiness. And it's sometimes told in, in pious books that if the saints could envy us on earth, would be the possibility of if they could come back and pray just one more Hail Mary, just how much more glory, how much more happiness they would have in heaven. Of course, the saints in heaven are perfectly happy, so they don't envy us at all. Nevertheless, there are degrees of glory, and by being faithful to the rosary, Our Lady promises to bring you to a higher degree in, of glory, of happiness in heaven. The eleventh promise, Our Lady says, You shall obtain all you ask of me by the recitation of the rosary. There is a apparition of the Blessed Virgin of Our Lady of the Rosary, in fact, in 1884, which explains how you can obtain anything you want by praying the Rosary. It is, I believe, in fulfillment of this promise when she says you can obtain anything you ask. Now, you have to understand the language of heaven when she says anything. That is, of course, anything that is not harmful for your salvation. Our Lord is called the Savior. And of course, our Lord, those who um, invoke our Lord or Jesus, it's not because they form the word uh, which sound, with that sound, but it's be, when they call him on his name, meaning they're calling on the Savior. So Jesus the Savior will not give you anything when you ask him for something that is bad for your salvation. And of course his mother imitates our Lord and won't do the, will not do it. So anything that is not bad for your salvation, and if you ask for it in the right way, she will grant it for you. And, of course, that brings us to the apparition of Our Lady of the Rosary in 1884 in Pompeii, Italy, where this woman, who had four incurable diseases, was cured by praying the rosary. And it was this way she told her to pray three rosaries, three novenas, that's three times nine, or a novena is nine days, so three novenas, or 27 days, of praying the rosary. The first day, pray the joyful mystery. The second day, pray the sorrowful mysteries. The third day, say the glorious mysteries. On the fourth day, start over again by praying the joyful mysteries. And doing that for the 27 days. Our Lady said, if you pray for this, for three novenas, and then you made immediately, prayed three more novenas of thanksgiving, thanking Our Lady for the favor that you've asked for, even if you haven't received it yet. And so some people call this the 54-day novena. That's 27 days or three novenas of petition, and 27 more days, or three novenas in thanksgiving. Our Lady promises that you, you shall obtain all that you ask of me by the recitation of the rosary. And Sister Lucy has told us that there's, in our time, that God has even given greater power to the rosary, so that people, there's no problem in the world, she says, that cannot be solved by the rosary. There's no problem whether it's national or international, whether it's physical or moral, whether it's a problem of a family, of an individual, of a community, of a city, of a parish, of the country. There's no problem that cannot be solved by the prayer of the rosary. And of course, we have many examples of that in our booklet, 
One of them, of course, one of the most famous ones in recent times is the fact that Austria in 1955 was delivered from the communist oppression that had been there for 10 years, from 1945 to 55. And one single priest went up and down the countries and cities of Austria and had got 10% of the people to pray the rosary to be delivered from the Russian armies occupying their country. And in fact, they left. Now when you consider that in 1955, Poland was suppressed by the Russian army, and in 1956, Hungary was brutally suppressed by the Russian army. But in 1955, Austria, their next door neighbor, was delivered without one ounce of bloodshed, with no one uh, getting hurt, and the Russian armies just withdrew voluntarily. And, uh, of course, they prayed the rosary. So, there's no problem in the world that cannot be solved by the rosary, including removing an enemy army occupying your own territory. Let us remember Our Lady promises to grant all that you ask of her by the recitation of the rosary. The twelfth promise, all those who propagate the Holy Rosary shall be aided by me in their necessities. And so each of us can do this, our part, to not only pray the rosary herself, but become apostles of the rosary and pass on the rosary and the knowledge of the rosary to others. Our Lady promises that she will help you in your necessities if you help her by passing on, letting people know about the rosary. So there's many ways to pass this information on. Certainly you can get our booklets, our leaflets, uh, the, these 15 promises in print. You can call our phone number. It's on the screen or at the end of the program and you can uh, become an Apostle of the Rosary. And our Lady promises in turn that she will aid you in all your necessities. So whatever you need, she will, she will give you if you help her pro promote and propagate the Rosary. On the 13th promise, I have obtained from my Divine Son that all the advocates of the Rosary shall have for intercessors the entire celestial court during the life and at the hour of death. If you read the lives of the saints, they're, um, they're admirable persons, certainly. And when you read uh, the, the phenomenal sufferings they went through or the great works of charity and mercy they did, or you think of the great love and the great tenderness they had for their fellow man because they loved our Lord and Our Lady so much. And you think of all the merits that these saints have. And these, these saints comprise and those who are known and those who are not known. That, the heart, that they're, they're called the celestial court. And, that the, and if you think even of the angels, the great angels, St. Michael and St. Gabriel and St. Raphael and thousands and billions of them, all of them praying for you. praying for you during your lifetime and especially at the moment of your death when we need all the help of heaven in order to overcome the assaults of the devil. So this is a great promise. You don't have to become well known or famous or know a lot of people. All you have to do is wherever you are, in whatever walk of life you have, to advocate the rosary and tell others about it. Be an advocate, be a promoter, be a defender of the rosary. And uh, all of us know uh, at least 200 people. Some of us know maybe 5,000 people, people individually. So all of us have more influence than most of us give ourselves credit for. Let us use that influence to become advocates of the rosary. Whether it's in our home, in our neighborhood, you can have the family rosary at home, you can have the block rosary in your neighborhood, you can have the parish rosary before Mass or after Mass. People who, who are promoting the rosary, who are doing their part to advance the cause of the rosary, wherever they find themselves, they are advocates of the rosary. Our Lady makes this great promise. The 14th promise. All who recite the rosary are my sons and brothers of my only Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord said to St. John on the cross, to St. John, Son, behold thy mother, woman, behold thy son. So, just as our Lord said to St. John, entrusting his mother to, to St. John's care, 
and entrusting St. John to the care of the Blessed Virgin, that this special love that our Lord had for St. John, this special predilection, and which is shown by his willing to St. John that Mary be his mother in this life, now that Jesus was dying and going to rise and go to heaven, and that John would be the special son of Mary. This is what Our Lady says will be similar for us. All those who recite the rosary are, are her sons and their brothers of her only divine son, Jesus Christ. And the 15th promise is that the devotion to the rosary is a great sign of predestination. Predestination means that a person is, uh, that God knows, uh, each person chooses his own eternity, whether we choose to go to heaven or we choose to go to hell. We are free to choose that. But there are certain signs we can tell whether a person is a good person and on their way to heaven, or they're a bad person and they're on the way to hell. You know that some people are very good at disguising their intentions. Some people are very good at fooling a lot of people. But as it says in the uh, fourth mystery of the, of the joyful mystery of the rosary, when Simeon says to the Blessed Virgin, "Your own soul, a soul shall pierce, so that the hearts, so that the thoughts of many hearts would be revealed." So. People, how they react to the Blessed Virgin shows how they are with God. Their hearts are shown, even despite of themselves, in their attitude to the Blessed Virgin. And we can tell, in turn, if they have a love of the Rosary, if they, are, if they have devotion to the Rosary, that they um, show a sign of predestination, that their hearts, even if they're on the wrong road at the moment, that their hearts are in the right direction, they still need to convert, they still need to overcome something, but their hearts are in the right direction. We need to have our hearts in the right direction. We have to have everything in the right direction. We have to love God with our whole heart, whole mind, whole strength, and whole will. But everything, in some ways, comes, first of all, from the heart. And having this devotion, this love for the rosary, is a sign that you're on the right road, that you will eventually get there if you stay faithful to the rosary. I hope this explains to you the 15 promises. They're wonderful promises for praying the rosary and pray the rosary every day, especially because Our Lady wants you to, especially in these times of great danger to your soul and great danger even physically, considering the chastisements that are around the corner because we've ignored Our Lady of Fatima. Pray the rosary every day. God bless you. <laughs>